Hello and welcome to the Mystic Cast, where you join me, Jack Stafford, and Deborah Littleboy, members of the Ethereum Society, as we break down the barriers between religion, science, metaphysics, philosophy, and mysticism, all of which are really only aspects of the self-same quest for truth. Please note that this is an independent program not produced or fact-checked by the Ethereum Society. Today, our guest is Charlie Zees. Hello, Charlie. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me, Jack and Deborah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Well, we're very excited to. Great. So where would you like to start? Well, we always try and focus on one big thing, because okay. I know you're a man of many words. I've seen your documentary. It's over five hours. <laughs> That's uh, right. It was, it was fascinating, but uh, luckily I watched you on double speed. So that helped a lot. I could get more in. I understand. I'm just turning off my, my phone here. My apologies. Good idea. Yeah. So let's see. I think it would be better if we focus in on one, because you've, you're a man of have studied a lot, uh, especially about which we'll get into. But if we could focus, the big question today is, how would you go about building a shape power temple? Okay. All right. And uh, I, I, I have uh, sort of oriented my presentation to that. I'll, if I can, maybe I'll start with just a few introduction, introductory comments until we get into the specifics. You know, I was a Wall Streeter for many years, and kind of after I retired, I was looking for something new to do. And I happened to come across David Wilcock, if you're familiar with him, about seven years ago. He did a 10-part series on Russian pyramids and their energy fields. And I was very, very intrigued because there was good science to back up what they found in those research reports. So uh, I also wanted to make them, and I do make those uh, today for, for personal use, for healing and meditation. But it took me on a journey of trying to figure out why did these pyramids have these energetic properties? Now, I come from a background, I, I, I understood harmonics. I wanted to be a classical musician when I was a youngster. My parents wouldn't have left, wouldn't pay for music school, so I didn't do it. But uh, uh, that's now kind of indirectly how I ended up on Wall Street. But uh, I also had a pretty decent grounding in metaphysics. I spent about 10 years in a metaphysical uh, church uh, in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, where I lived before, uh, prior to now. And um, I learned a lot about uh, met just the concept of metaphysics. And for the group, I'm sure this is not a, a shocker, but if you believe that your thoughts create your experience, then you have to believe that there is a process a of some level of precision that will take that, that high-frequency pure thought and convert it down to physical experience in some way. And so I've always been intrigued about this whole idea of cosmology and how, how the world is put together. And that's really where my research has taken me over the last six years. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. I have found a specific geometric angle uh, both in the Russian pyramids, it's in the Giza pyramids, but it's in all of our religious buildings all over the world. It's in fundamental physical processes that we're going to see. It's in high technology. It's in ancient symbols and sacred geometric drawings and so forth. So, and what this angle is, it's called, I'm, I'm calling this process universal phi scaling. Uh, phi is a shorthand term for the golden ratio, and the golden ratio uh, is something that we know about, but we're not really taught about it in school. Its shorthand name is phi, P-H-I, uh, and uh, the numerical equivalent of it is 1.618. Uh, we don't learn about that in school, but we do learn about pi, which has to do with, with circles and spheres. But um, uh, anyway... I figure maybe the best way to do this, and Jack, you tell me, you know, if you'd rather go through discussions, but I've got some slides here and I can kind of walk the people through what I've found. I think and I prefer not to, just to focus on a, because a lot of people don't use video that we were an audio podcast. Okay. Okay. Well then, then we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll talk it through. But um, the first thing that we have to do is to understand that, in terms of the world of sacred geometry, all creation is theorized to begin in a sphere. 
because it's the most perfect uh, in terms of not having any stresses or any unique angles or boundaries. So uh, when I was trying to figure out the geometry of these pyramids, I there was there was no information that was uh, put on the uh, or, or that was allowed to be published in the West on the Russian pyramid research, but uh, the director did say that secret geomet sacred geometric principles were involved. So I was trying to figure out how to do that. And I'll explain it for the audience just visually or just simplistically. If you take a sphere with a diameter of one, and we've, we've already said that uh, this golden ratio is 1.618, so if each time you put a new sphere on top of the previous one, you uh, divided the previous diameter by 1.618, you're going to get a stack of spheres that start getting smaller at the top. And theoretically, it would go to infinity uh, without uh, you know, re reaching any uh, this artificial boundary that you could achieve by just building a, a triangle or a pyramid kind of on the sides of those stacked spheres. And when you do that, you end up with a very specific geometric angle, uh, which I'm calling the geometry of universal phi scaling. And why is that important? Well, as it turns out, I'll, I'll just walk through a lot of these examples. And you know, uh, mentally, uh, the Great P uh, Pyramid at Giza, for example, is much flatter in its geometry but interestingly enough, this angle, which we find at the bottom of the Russian pyramids, is exactly at the top of the Giza pyramid. So I knew that was significant, and we'll talk about why that's significant a little later. But then I started to find this geometry in all religious architecture from all the major religious traditions around the world. Mm. It's the spire on top of a cathedral. Is that that's the kind of angle we're talking about? Yeah, we're talk that's right. We're talking also about talk about a, a dunce cap. That's right. We Is got, that to we get more energy into your head? Is that was it originally? Uh... That's right. This was originally uh, the dunce cap was invented by a 13th century Franciscan monk named John Duns Scotus. Duns was the town in Scotland that he was from. He was a contemporary, actually, of uh, St. Francis of Assisi and was considered his peer at the time until he started messing around with the witch hats uh, and wearing those. The witch witch's hats are also at the, the special angle. Exact same geometry. And he started to realize that he had a connection <laughs> to higher self, to God, whatever you want to call it, to this life force energy wearing this hat. And so he developed a concept of a metaphysical God, and that was not going to be acceptable in the Catholic Church. So the dunce cap, which was actually a way of, of achieving a higher level of consciousness and connectivity, was uh, vilified and turned into an object of ridicule. But, mm. Yeah, so it's there. We're going to see it. You see it in ancient Hindu temples. You see it in Buddhist temples. You see it in Gothic cathedrals. Yeah, I saw your documentary so many. You really, you done yeah, your research. It is everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, Gothic cathedrals, perhaps, to, to go on topic with, with this point, they are a classic example of how to build a, a shape power uh, a building. Because... Yeah. I haven't done the research on every single one yet, but I have identified approximately 90% of the steeples in uh, the Gothic cathedrals have sacred geometric principles. And I think I'll be able to derive the rest of them just when I have enough time to do it. But yeah. I have one of the most interesting things I saw in your documentary was you talking about ether, which is dismissed by science at the moment. At yeah. the moment. At and the uh, because that's that's how you're getting the en the energies coming down, and so then the uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the uh, the energies through the ether and the pyramid somehow collects these energies or concentrates them. Yeah, is that right? Or? That's right. The, uh, with with only one exception, we're we're getting actually etheric energy that's coming back out from the earth, which mm. is and uh, there's there's. A lot that comes in, and then most of it is reflected back. And it's the difference between those two forces that creates gravity. But that's a separate topic. But there are what, etheric energies coming up 
the, and the pyramid will concentrate them inside. Mm. Because well. what we also want to talk about today, so we want to go talk about how to build a shape power temple. And our master, Dr. King, he was an expert in in radionics, which is is a pretty is not a common science, I would say at the moment. It's fair to say. Right. Right. Well, but, I've played around with it. I have a radionics machine myself, and I have done some testing with it. Another another area that I'd love to delve into at some point. But yeah, yeah. because he, um, as well as the ether, also one of the many things modern science dismisses today is a spiritual energy. And right. we're very, as the Ethereum Society, we're very involved in the the radi radiating spiritual energy into into batteries, and mm -hmm. we. Uh, we send these batteries, we release these batteries through spiritual en energy radiators at times of world crisis. And we right. Right. we put them into psychic centers of the earth. The earth is a, a living being, uh, the, the goddess. And so, uh, what else do we do with them, Deborah? Please add some. Well, we collect the, we, we collect the energies um, when satellite number three, which is a, a, a spacecraft which comes into orbit four times a year and, radi um, and radiates down spiritual energies to us and we collect those so we've got a collection device and then we store that energy um, and send it out for if there's a, a crisis or a war situation we can actually pinpoint where we want that energy to go to so it's like super um super potent energy that we can pinpoint in like a laser to mm -hmm. a certain to, to a certain area um uh, and I would say that's probably the the sort of the the main the, the main thing that we do um, on an ongoing basis. We're we're always pinpointing where we think that the energy should will but do the best good um, because as, as our master said, we've got a, a shortage. There is only one energy shortage, and it's the spiritual energy shortage. If we yeah. we're all if we we're all being shaped how temples as our body. Um, was designed to be, we wouldn't be having this conversation because we'd have a perfectly balanced world that we've got a long way to go. So we've got to help it out with, with bricks and mortar and whatever else, which is, which of course is what you've been um, investigating, Charlie. So, yeah. Well, that's right. You used a, a term which I think is, is relevant to this discussion, which was bringing up the idea of lasers. Uh, what the pyramid does, and, and maybe this is the easiest way to explain this without going into harmonic theory and wave mechanics and all that, but what the pyramid does is it takes any uh, frequency or f energy field within it, and it concentrates its light, laser light. It, it makes it highly coherent, and that's the whole point, and that's what this geometry and six years of research is really proving is that there is a geometry, a mathematical, harmonics uh, combination here, which is concentrating and making laser light any thought or any uh, field, ener ener energetic frequency that's in its domain. So uh, that's why when I uh, ask for uh, guidance on certain questions, how do I, you know, where do I go next with this research? How, how do I find it? I put it out to the universe and it, it, and it comes back to me very, very quickly because I know that my thoughts are coherent and, and I'm putting out a very highly coherent message into the field. So yeah, that's, I, and, and that's what this is all about. One of the tragedies is that once you start to, to you know, you spend the time, Jack, if like you did, you go through my documentary, you know that. We've known about this for thousands of years, and yet we don't learn about this in school. So why is that? How could that have happened? Why is this being kept from us? It's because once people come to realize that how powerful their thinking is and that there is proof, there's a model that will show you that your thoughts help to create your experience, then we become powerful beings. And we can't be controlled anymore. So I think that's a very, very <laughs> big part of this process. Uh, there's a lot of information as well of free energy technology. I'm going to be speaking about this at the Tesla Tech Conference next week in New Mexico. But 
all of the major free energy technologies from Victor Schauberger to the Russian pyramids to Nikola Tesla to John Keeley, who was a member of the Theosophical Society, as a matter of fact, uh, all of and, and research from Russia show that sacred geometry and the golden ratio specifically will all uh, create this ability to, to bring coherence to an energy field and to such an extent that you could actually harvest free energy just from shape power. So it's all just fascinating research. I want to see that new documentary, The Lost Century, that's come out by Dr. Stephen Greer. Oh, I'd love to. I have not. When is, it's is on it YouTube. Out it's out yeah. now on YouTube. Yeah, you should check it okay. out. Okay. So let's just go back to the um, to the target. So how do we build this spiritual temple? Well, spiritual. we're going to have to. We're going to start with saying I. I think sacred geometry is absolutely the key. Uh, the uh, there are in addition to, to the research that I've done on sacred geometry and in the steeples and so forth. Once you would, if if you build something again with these geometric forms, uh, with the precision that's necessary to achieve this coherent level, uh, people people have. I, that to me is the key. That that's the answer to this whole uh, question. Uh, sacred geometric forms have been used for meditation, for psi uh, experiences, and so forth. Uh, uh, people have used, uh, you know, when they sit in the Russian pyramids, the the meditators from uh, Tibet and so forth, the Buddhists, uh, they have profound experiences. We've had people who've had it, profound experiences. People with psi abilities can do this and so forth. So it's really just a question of observing what we've done in the past and right. learning. You know, we're, we're having to reverse engineer, just as I did, this geometry. Mm -hmm. But I think this holds the key to uh, any number of uh, uh, shape power phenomena, not just free energy. Our old, our cathedrals, the Gothic cathedrals, as an example, uh, uh, my research and that of others is proving that or demonstrating that these were very likely uh, healing centers or energy production centers uh, before they were repurposed into churches. So Tell that story about this on the in your documentary about the. And when you put the, the speaker in water and then it makes the shape of a stained glass window, one of them's amazing. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, a, uh, there's a study, for example, it was done. Uh, the woman's name is escaping me in England, but um, she actually went into four uh, cathedrals in England and was able with very, very high uh, anyway, fidelity, I guess, um, uh, microphones to record the resonant frequency of four different cathedrals. And what she found was that when she she repeated this process a number of times, she once she recorded it the first time, she went back into the cathedral and played that and then recorded the new vibrations and so forth. But she finally got it revved up to the point where she could could play this using what are called cymatic uh, uh, instruments. Cymatics, for those in, who don't know, you can actually create sacred geometric forms through sound. And the way you can do that, you can put a speaker uh, on a table uh, on four corners, uh, mount a piece of rubber, for example, that will vibrate when the sound comes out of the speaker, and you can pour some sand on the top of it and what she was able to accomplish was to find that each of these pyramids, excuse me, uh, uh, cathedrals, had a very specific sacred geometric form that would come about as a result. So that is actually some of the most visible demonstrations that there are of geometry uh, coming out of harmonics. And so there's... There was a study, and I'm digressing here, but it came Just down. to finish that, was a Tanya Harris. And, uh, Tanya Harris, that's right. Yeah, St. George in the East gave an incredible stained glass work. That's something I learned from also from our studies, isn't it, Deborah? That uh, because in, in the theory society, we incorporate a lot of people, what would say is, is standard 
uh, Christianity, like the, you know, you have the clothing like the bishops and um, the the hook and the crook, whatever things like that. Because, but it's because it's their energy. They works. They you take them because they work. And a sim, you know, so when you when you armed with this information, you see a stained glass window, and you now know that it's a, it's a, a radionic device or that's right or that's harmonics, right. and it's magnifying. That's right. That's right. It gives you a greater understanding, doesn't it? Well, that's right. In fact, the stained glass windows could have represented the resonant frequency of each of these cathedrals. And people <laughs> have also done research taking, uh, finding the somatic diagram that, that's associated with specific frequencies, and they've begun to be able to associate those with specific cathedrals. So, yeah, it's all <laughs> fast work. So, so we need a stained glass window in our temple as well. And this is. It's getting a bigger project. It started just as a cone, but now we're, yeah. There were other things. What I'd like to know, Charlie, sorry to just jump in. First of all, the, when I look at the stained glass windows, like the rose, you can see it in, when you're just looking at chrysanthemums and roses and, and, um, and the sunflower and they've got the 21, 13, um, frequencies going the, the two way. But I've always been interested in, you've said that the cone is, is, um, is ideal and you've explained right. why. Right. Would it, would it be, is it, would it be fair to say that if you had cones in the Fibonacci sequence, so in other words, if you had like one cone or three cones or 13 cones, that would actually, um, they would work better as a group if they were in, within the, within the sequence. I think that, uh, well, yes, <laughs> you're, you're hitting a lot of topics there at once, but I'm going <laughs> to, the Fibonacci sequence uh, is necessary for the creation of the golden ratio. So I'm going to use as an example, the Sri Yantra. This is, if you're familiar with it, it's a sacred geometric diagram from India. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the most revered in the, in the world. Well, uh, it's a, series of, of up and upside down and, and upright uh, pyramids that intersect each other. Uh, but we find, for example, this geometric angle in that, uh, that diagram. But when you, uh, when you, when you look at the Fibonacci sequence, you're right. It ultimately becomes the golden ratio, uh, as it's called asymptotically because, uh, if you take the Fibonacci sequence, and it doesn't matter which two numbers you start with, but you're going to get this this I, this scaling idea where if you start by taking the ratios of each two sets of numbers and you start to analyze them, they, they start to come together towards this golden ratio relationship. Why is that important? Because we see the Fibonacci sequence, as you're mentioning, in nature. It can be in a flower. It can be... Uh, and, and, uh, at right, you know, it's in the body everywhere in our bones and so forth. Those are one and two dimensional examples of this, but three dimensional examples, which is where scaling comes in and this whole creative process uses the exact same principles. I, I probably digress there, but I don't know if I answered your question. I, I took that as a yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you heard of uh, Dan A. Davidson? He was the very first slide that I had in my presentation for you today. If we were going to use him, but yes, I Dan A. Davidson Shape Power was the very first book after I started learning about pyramids that convinced me that geometry did create energy fields, and that's a classic text. He goes through and uh, yeah, he doesn't attack it in quite the same way but hmm. for for the audience what he did was just to take some some uh ideas that a friend of his had uh it's a it's a name for pyramids it's escaping me right now from back in the 19 or 50 19th century but uh he he just stuck objects into like a piece of styrofoam in different angle shapes and then he could measure that there was an energy field that was created as a result so uh, absolutely love that. Another person who has delved into that to a great degree is Dr. Uh, Ibrahim Karim, Ibrahim 
who uh, has created what's called biogeometry. And uh, he's, he's been able to uh, show not so much with the, with the geometry that I'm doing, but just shapes themselves, no matter whether they're pyramids or cones, that uh, even just specific drawings can have uh, power and, and energy uh, forming uh, capabilities. All of this, I should also just point out to the audience, is verified through a lot of research from Russia, which has also been censored. Uh, I had to come to London, as a matter of fact, to get the article that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, and that's an article from uh, Dr. Anatoly Akimov. He published this about 30 years ago. And he, he demonstrated in his research that uh, uh, crystal structures in what are called micelles or in, in like liver bile and fluids and so forth would grow much more rapidly if they were housed inside of a pyramid or a cone that contained the golden ratio in their geometric form. Well, this was an indirect way of proving that sacred geometry was absolutely key in uh, creating coherence, creating free energy and the like. So, yeah, there, Dan was the pioneer. And uh, we had him uh, on the show. He was one of the first guests. Absolutely. He's written Lovely a new guy. version of his book a couple of years ago. I have it. So absolutely love, love his work. <laughs> Small world in the shape community. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to meet him sometime myself. So uh, he would be. You'd be a great person to meet. Deborah actually sent images of the temples that we'd had in our Cosmic Voice, the magazine for the Ethereum Society, a while ago. Did yes. any of those resonate with you? Or? Well, I, I measured the geometric angle of um, the um, singular one that, that's it kind of done more in the shape of a, a cupola, I would say. Mm. But uh, I, as I mentioned to Deborah, it looks as though this this is the same angle that I'm researching in some of the remaining 10 to 15 percent of the steeples and the Gothic cathedrals. It looks to be about 83.8 degrees. And this is some derivative of this very same uh, uh, universal phi scaling geometry. So, yes, there is a resonance there. And I, I just haven't gotten through all of my research to be able to talk intelligently on that angle, but it looks like it's a derivative of it of, of some sort. And um, I'm working with a person who does sacred geometry has for, for years. That's not my specialty, but um, uh, he was the one who discovered this through some work of Victor Schauberger. And we're both working on the second edition of my book. So mm. he's going to be co-author now. So, you know, I hope to have, information maybe on that you know by the time the book comes out well you when it's published you I must come on again and, yeah. and so it, it wouldn't be a surprise to me to find that find that relationship one of the other things we we don't talk about you know we've we've always hushed up in modern societies the divic kingdom and we should we should mention about the divas that we we collect the energy through our prayers and then we we send them up through the through the temple and at the point that the divas can take them and take the That's energy. Nice. And do you have any uh, experience of that? Or... Well, I mean, I, again, I think, I think that's the whole idea. If you can collectively, and, and, and I think that was part of the purpose of, of, of these cathedrals originally to mm. concentrate the consciousness uh, or a, a frequency that was coming from organs, whatever it may have been. But again, it acts like a laser. It takes these, these it, it concentrates it into a single place. Now, mm -hmm. my theory, if we're all if you're familiar with the torus as a, uh, as a an org, uh, you know, its form, I believe that the toroidal version of creation is really where we're my my work is is coming to. And so, what the tip of a, a steeple would be, or, yeah. or a pyramid would be that point in the center of the torus where the two horns, they, they don't meet, but there's this magical place in the middle where time and space come together. So yeah, I think that is uh, critical. And like I say, I, th I think that it's looking at that picture from the 60s from your magazine, 
it could be that it it is one of these these geometric forms, but I just have to do more research. I remember a quote, Deborah. Do you, if if something happened to the pyramids in Egypt, you better you better start praying very very hard, very very quickly. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, and I can't I can't um, I can't give you the chapter and verse on that, but certainly it there was it was along that lines that mm. uh, yeah. And and along with this, on the same line as that, the most expensive piece of real estate in the UK is um, on Salisbury Plain. Again, because of the of the, the shape and, and the and the way that the energy it, um, can be manipulated through through those angles. Mm. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, mm. You think it's all about angles, or is it all about um, the relationships of things? And the, you know, there's obviously when they designed those cathedrals that we all love so much. They must have there was so much. Well, the geometry. The I, I, I mean, to me, and that's where the rest of, I guess, my, you know, some of the other research that I've looked at comes into play. When you see this geometry and technology today, uh, I don't want to get off topic too much, but. You just you you find the universality of this in all of the physical processes that we uh, we find in nature in our high technology, for example, all of our rocket ships, bullets, uh, even the Native American arrows and the fletching on the arrows, uh, spaceships, racing vehicles, uh, hypersonic vehicles that we're using now for horrible purposes to destroy our world. But they're all using these sacred geometric principles. So I think that's, to me, from a cosmological, I mean, all of this points to a a cosmology, which I've been able to develop, which incorporates the torus, uh, scaling of the platonic solids. Why is that important? These are these energy points that we find on the globe where all of these sacred sites are formed. These are these are reflections of the fact that inside the sphere, which is the Earth, we find these energy fields connecting to specific points of sacred geometric forms throughout the planet. So we know all of these things are happening, and they're all based upon these principles. And I, what I'm trying to, what I have put together is a model that will demonstrate that all of this stuff fits together, whether it's platonic solids, whether it's fractal scaling. And it, and it helps to to explain why, if, if you've looked at fractals, for example, why are fractals just a little bit different? Each level you go, you drill down. They're just a little bit different, but they contain the, the essence of, of the previous level. Well, that's because if my model is right, you're using the Fibonacci sequence to achieve this this convergence towards this five, but it's always off a little bit on each side, you know, one way or the other. And I think that that could be what contributes to that. So there's just all of this information and and it, it ties back to consciousness, it ties back to creation. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it, it, it's it's so amazing to me that we could have a, a concept called the Big Bang, which the <laughs> best astrophysicists will say uh works except for the bang part and i mean that yeah. sincerely so what else is left you know if if you if you can't explain the bang and you can't explain how matter came out of nothing maybe we ought to start looking at stuff that has a model that works here on our in our physical world which is infinitely scalable and that's the key from the subatomic up to the galactic and that's what researchers like Nassim Haramein has been working on for for years you know he's he he showed that the universe is scaled in the golden ratio uh he never developed the model that i'm putting together but i mean he's demonstrated that there's infinite scalability in the universe and that's a key component so as below so above you know uh back to basic metaphysical principles i think it was terence mckenna who talked about science wanting its one free miracle and then it can do the rest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. So this, this may, you know, when there's no time or space in that middle of the Taurus, well, maybe that's where everything did start. And we just don't mm. understand that process. I don't know. 
Mm. But uh, we're well, getting yeah, back to the temples. Let's, yeah. Uh, one other reason, because it's in our the constitution of our society has fourteen objectives, and number eleven is to design and construct five shape power temples. And you think it, you know, the reason might be to, you know, it's a place we can all gather, and we enhance our prayers. We send more energy, and help with recruitment for sure. You know, nice, nice shiny temple. But there is a more to it. Deborah actually found this article. Shall I read this, Deborah? Then. Somewhere, it says somewhere down the line, they, they need a place where some energy, any surplus, surplus energy can be concentrated and brought together and reduced to a usable frequency and then re-radiated outwards. The Shape Power Temple will be the first such station on Earth. Some of you may be tempted against your better judgment to ask the question, why should we do this energy manipulation? The answer is, of course, obvious. Already we have had, if anything, too much intervention from outside. Sooner or later, mankind has to stand on its own two feet. A shape-powered temple, believe it or not, will be a living demonstration of our spiritual growth, proving that at last, after countless centuries of outside help, here is a group of people who are determined to stand squarely on their own two feet by making a karmic manipulation so that they may be given the privilege of stabilizing energies which can be made far more usable by mankind. Energies which, but for the shape power temple, might be dissipated because mankind is unable to use the high frequencies they wish they originally have. It's right. this, we have a great transmission in the society, um, the one free, uh, one, um, the one energy. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Deborah? Mm -hmm. You know who that came from? Was that was a Saturnian yes, it's last? It's from a lord of Saturn. It was very early days as well, the late the late fifties. But just in case you, Charlie, you didn't um, take on board the outside help that Dr. King was talking about. There is the cosmic masters that come in and and actually help us by radiating these spiritual energies down to earth. And if they didn't be, if they weren't doing that, we didn't have the great white brother that could, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And all these ascended beings actually helping us, we wouldn't be here. Why? And, and so, and so Dr. King has said, look, you've been helped enough. We need to do it ourselves. Sure, and, sure. And, that, and that's, and that's why it's in the constitution and, and has stayed there. Even though, um, he, as I wrote to you, he, um, our master did a workaround that has what we call, um, spiritual energy radiator. So a collector of the energy into batteries and then irradiating out and they're portable. So we've, so we've got five of those, but mm -hmm. to actually have a, a temple, of course, would amplify the whole, the whole thing. So, yeah. We, we have taken, uh, I guess the best analogy and, and probably something that would be a great experiment would be to take these radiators that you have and try to use those inside of a specific geometric form that, you know, conforms to sacred ge geometric principles. I think you're going to find a tremendous amplification of the results that you, you would have achieved. Uh, you're using an effect. It sounds like if you're, you're achieving, getting these energies and storing them, uh, that's kind of acting as a capacitor of some sort. It's storing that in some way. And if you could put that inside, I think it would magnify uh, those energies just enormously. And that, I think, is the key. Ge geometry can be used, and that's where my research has taken us. The golden ratio in specifics will amplify and magnify, clarify any energy field that comes within its borders. So uh, using radionics machines, I've done that. We've We've done some brief experiments with that, but we've certainly done it with intention. We've done it with sound healing. We've done it with uh, other types of, of scalar uh, energy devices as well. And uh, the, the energetic results were magnified many, many times over. As an example, using the body as an, visualizing it as an energetic entity in and of itself, we have measured the life force energy of uh, a person outside the pyramid and then after they've stayed inside. and using the what's called a bovis life force scale, which is used by dowsers, you know, you might start at a level of 10 to 15, 20,000 
uh, outside the pyramid, and and it's all relative here, you know. It's just, but uh, but once you go inside the pyramid, you might be in the millions. But if you put some sort of sound or scalar technology in here with us, like solfeggio frequencies playing through a scalar device, the energy goes up to billions. So I just do you sleep in a pyramid? Magnification is just enormous. What's do you that? sleep in a Do you sleep in a pyramid, or do you spend? Time I don't with? sleep in one. I have one next to my in, next to my bed in the room, and uh, the reason is that the 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 energy field again is toroidal in scope, so it's going to affect uh, the energy not just in my room but far beyond. But having it nearby, uh, I cut the amount of sleep that I need by a couple hours a night simply because I think I'm able to regenerate that much faster. <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe it's getting old, but I, I, I mean, I'm down to about five hours of sleep a night, four hours. And, uh, you know, the rest of the time, uh, you look in good I'm, shape. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to be 71 next week or next month, but, uh, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm in good shape and I have not, uh, just for the audience, I have not had a single day of illness since I started making these pyramids. And I'm not saying that other than it's fact. And uh, we did a study as well on the health benefits. And in 2020, we took got 50 people to do uh, a session uh, with the pyramids and sound healing who were experiencing or presenting with COVID slash flu symptoms. Uh, we didn't know because the tests were just starting. We didn't know if they were real or fake. It, it doesn't matter because it's all the same stuff anyway. But everyone got well by the end of the session so uh this is this is the residence chamber that's really what i'm trying to say maybe that's you know the best way to put it this is a resonance chamber and it's going to amplify uh all of those intentions whatever they may be inside uh this geometric form so it might be a while before we as a society get enough can get the money together buy a land build a big temple but if people at home want to make their own shape power temple. I've seen some videos on your, is it as simple as a tubing, plastic tubing, or do you have to have special yeah, tubing? Uh, yeah, we sell, uh, or excuse me, I mean, we don't sell them, uh, but in England, which is, that's where you are, correct? Both of you? I'm in, I'm in England. Okay, and okay. But uh, there is a company in England that sells the very same pipe that I make mine out of. They're a distributor for a U.S. company. has to be a special material or? But it's, well, it's PVC is what we make them out of because it's easy and it's also a very effective material. It's non-conductive. And that's a very important factor in the creation of these fields. But yeah, you can go Why on. Why is that important? Because you don't want to create a, you, wouldn't, you don't use metal or anything like that? No, no we don't. And I, I'm not going to suggest that I have the answers as to why yet, uh, but uh all of the torsion physicists in Russia, the, the Russian pyramid builders, research team, uh, we've tested the energy fields, the law of one material, the other channel material indicates you should should not use conductive metals uh, okay. to, to make pyramids. So I haven't seen any research, quite honestly, that says that, that conductive metals are, are base metals. Are so even just a simple bit of tube, plastic tubing you need Three-sided pyramid or four-sided? Is... Well, I make a four-sided. I'm going to put my hands up so mm -hmm. you can see. I'm sitting inside mine right now. You won't see it with the background, but it's just PVC pipe. Oh, you're in and, it now. And we, uh, the, the uh, all of the parts are put together with uh, connectors. It's like Tinker Toys, if you know what those are. Yeah. Adults and and you know anyone you just, can do this. Yeah, Even Deborah could do this. Do what? <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we we I I've got videos on my uh website stargatepyramids.com, how to videos you can make them. Uh you can also go to the hardware store if you have the problem is I've made this for the American market and you need access to make these work right to to a PVC pipe that's that's measured as what's called 3 quarter inch. So if you go into metrics then the math is going to be mm. off a little bit so you and do you does it have to be a particular size how big is the pyramid you're in uh this one is six and a half feet tall 
I make another one that's seven feet tall and another one that's five and a half feet tall. Okay. The five and a half foot version is only good for seated, excuse me, for seat, sitting on the floor like yoga style meditation. I'm sitting in a chair right next to my desk and I'm inside the medium. And the larger pyramid will allow you to get a little bit bigger chair. Maybe I should get one then. I could put one here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could, you could put one. Uh, I think your chair would fit inside. Um, well, I have a meditation room. Maybe I have a prayer room. Sorry, I could put it in. Maybe well. you could put it in there as well. Yeah. And I think you'd find that, uh, you know, people who are very, very sensitive to to this, I've gotten a number of med you know, serious meditators uh, who have written and, and commented that they're, they're able to experience, you know, whole new uh, higher levels of connection. For some of the simplest things, it might sound simple to people listening, but it's sometimes the simplest things like we do in the society, we do a lot of deep breathing. We, it doesn't get much simpler than breathing. That's right. That's right. And we've sort of profound results. I listened to, I, I apologize. I can't remember his name. I listened to the person uh, on, Paul Nugent, was on, was with Russell Brand two days ago on the um, who does deep breathing? Who do you you know who that is? The, the guy, uh, I uh, can Wim Hof. Yes, Wim Hof was on, yeah. and uh, it was an amazing conversation. Yes, that's all this is. It's 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 cycles. It's it's understanding the patterns and the forms of nature, and and uh, your body will heal itself. I think that's that. There's research to talk about health as well and coherence. Yeah. Uh, that was done on these pyramids in, in Russia, and they show that your energetic aura before sitting in the pyramid, and this was a person who was a meditator, so you would expect it to be fairly coherent, but there were still major holes in their energetic aura, and after sitting in the pyramid, all of those uh, holes were gone, and you could see in a, a, a con coherent energy field around the uh, the subject. So. Well uh you know it's there's just so much so much amazing information uh, so where can people go to before we round up let, where can people go to find out more from you about your work? okay there's several places to go uh the pyramid science foundation is a 501c3 i put together several years ago uh to do this research you can go to pyramidsciencefoundation.org and that will uh, tell you about our foundation, it has some of our own research. We have over 300 research videos on our YouTube page, Pyramid Science Foundation. I've so seen you doing everything with frogs and experiments. Yeah, and oh yeah, we're doing everything. It shows that frogs grow bigger and crops grow bigger and everything. So, uh, And then finally, for the pyramids themselves, uh, you can go to stargatepyramids.com. Uh, and that's where I sell uh, the pyramids that I make. Okay. Well, Deborah, do we have anything else to that you to cover in the show notes that we? No, I think that we've pretty much covered that. But I have a question. As I'm listening to you, Charlie, it came to me that our bodies um, are radionic machines that have yeah. just got bent out of shape because we've not maintained them properly and so if we were if we were to put pure pure um water etc and 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 pure food in and we thought properly and we breathe properly actually we we would have we wouldn't have any holes in our in 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 our um auras we we would be radiating the energy as we we were designed to as we designed ourselves to is that me being fanciful or would you would you agree with that i would totally agree with everything you said i i'm not going to be naive to say that that sitting inside of a pyramid is the only thing that that makes my you know me healthy at this point in my life totally free to do what i want to do it's a combination of eating the right foods drinking clean, structured water, meditating, exercising, all of those things are going to be important. So, but all of these come back to the same basic principles. We have to raise the vibration and the coherence. And that's where I think my research comes in the most, the coherence of our energy fields in order to thrive. And we can do that through our thinking, 
through geometry, through the foods we eat, and so forth, and the thoughts we think. Thank you. We also do a lot of mantra as well to spin the aura and throw off impurities. And uh, yeah, it comes back to what you're both saying is about the purification, uh, returning to the health that we is our birthright. And we should, That's we right. all started that. That's exactly right. So, uh, uh, you know, it's an amazing world to, I, I'm so grateful to have found this research because it's now before I've, before I leave this this plane of existence, I want to have completed my model to uh, uh, demonstrate, you know, how consciousness uh, is really at the center of this magnificent uh, structure, uh, you know, this reality that we experience, which is based upon the collective consciousness of uh, of our planet and our world. Mm. That's what your work is trying to show that as mankind has got to return to. You know, even like 400 years ago, we were building much better temples than we are now. And if you look well, at the modern churches there, I was walking one around the other day and they, it had no sense of, it was just an architect who got given the brief and come up with some. What the, one thing we haven't discussed, I'll just bring it up briefly. Uh, our history is not what we believe it to be. And as you know, once I began this research in architecture, I knew there was something seriously wrong with our history. I've begun to study uh, the works of uh, people like Anatoly Fomenko, a Russian mathematician who's shown that our chronology of our history has totally uh, been rewritten in the last 500 years. It's interesting that that rewriting occurred at the same time that the Gothic cathedrals stopped being built. The most magnificent architectural structures, I think, just in terms of pure architecture and engineering on the planet. and. Uh, also, the quadrivium, which is the study that Plato put together for his advanced students that shows that mathematics, geometry, harmonics, all and cosmology are all interrelated to, to make this, this reality. So, yeah, all of this stuff, something seriously happened about 500 years ago, and our chronology was rewritten at a place called the Council of Trent with the Catholic Church. So, you know... Uh, they're a big part of the reason why uh, our history really isn't what it seems to be. Mm -hmm. And a reincarnation was taken out of the Bible in That's about right. 400 AD as well. So, Well, and the question is, was it 400 or was it 1400? And that's the question. One of the things Fomenko did was to prove that there's through science and the science he used was uh, looking at solar and lunar eclipses as they were uh, identified with dates in the Bible. And he finds that there's a missing like thousand years in this chronology. And he does that with science. So uh, the rest of it, uh, and he's got seven volumes of this. I've only begun to read uh, the second. Oh, he's, he's more than, he writes more than you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. does. <laughs> but he's had 50 years to do it. So I'll try to catch up. <laughs> yeah, well, if you keep staying under the pyramid, and, uh, you'll get Well, it. that's where my best thoughts come from. Absolutely right. So uh, I stay in as much as I can when I need help. So, that's great. Well, this has been really wonderful, Charlie. And uh, I hope you'll come back on once you, the, the new book is ready. I would love to do that, Jack. And uh, Deborah, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to your audience. And uh, equally as fascinated to have learned about your uh, your society and 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 what it does so thank you please yes. yeah ask everyone to go and check out your videos and your website and uh it's very rewarding okay thanks so much all thank right you. take care. Have a great day bye-bye bye-bye